Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Korean Fried Chicken. That's right, sorry Kentucky, but for my money this is the best KFC. And while this does not include 11 secret herbs and spices, it's still incredibly flavorful, teeth shatteringly crunchy, and there's no bones to deal with, so you can eat it super fast. All right, so let's go ahead and get started, and the first step would be to prep the chicken. And for this, we're gonna use boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And for the size of thighs I'm using, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these in four pieces each. And if you flip it over this way, with the smooth side down and the rougher side up, you're actually gonna see some natural seams in the meat. So this one side here that's a little thinner, I like to cut it right there, which is kind of like I said, a natural seam, and then another cut right here. And then that other side, which is just a little bigger, a little fatter, I'll just turn and cut that in half. And that's gonna give me four relatively similar sized pieces. And then once we've cut up our thighs into chunks, we're gonna go ahead and toss those in a bowl so we can start the marinade, which is super simple. So to the chicken, we're gonna add some salt, some freshly ground black pepper, some finely, finely minced garlic, and believe it or not, some grated onion. Oh yeah, who does not enjoy a good cry? So we're gonna take an onion and we're gonna take a cheese grater and we're gonna grate the onion right into the bowl. And by the way, do yourself a big favor and just get a half a small onion and grate it. I was trying to use up some pieces I had left over, which ended up being very awkward to grate and hard and I almost lost a nail, but eventually I did get it done. And no, it's not gonna be the same if you dice it. All right, it has to be grated. We want all those cell membranes in the onions being torn apart, so a bunch of crazy compounds will be released and that's what's gonna do the magic in this marinade. So we're gonna take a spatula, we're gonna mix that very, very thoroughly, make sure all that garlic and onion is evenly distributed, and once that's been mixed up very, very thoroughly, what we're gonna do is wrap that tightly and refrigerate that from four hours to overnight. And while I do prefer leaving this overnight, it's totally fine and delicious with as little as four hours, okay? So we're gonna pop that in the fridge and then really nothing happens until you're ready to fry. So we'll fast forward 10 hours, our chicken's marinated and we're ready to make the batter. So that's gonna start with some self-rising flour, which is just flour with a baking powder and salt in it. So if you don't have that, of course, I'll give you the full recipe on the blog. And then to the flour, we're also gonna add some cornstarch. And then we'll season this up a little bit with a pinch of salt, a little bit of sugar, and some freshly ground black pepper. And that's gonna be it for the dry ingredients. So we'll go ahead and give that a whisk, mix everything evenly. And then the last and most important ingredient, ice water. So we're gonna take some ice water, we're gonna stir that in until we basically have something that resembles a pancake batter. And by the way, one tip, don't just read the measurement I give you for the water and just dump it all in and mix it, because what if it's too much? All right, add 80% of it, give it a stir, see what you got, add a little more, etc. okay? But basically, when you're done, it should look exactly like this. And of course, you're gonna give it the old polka polka with your finger to test, and it should coat your finger nice and thickly like that, so that looks perfect. And at that point, we're ready to preheat our fryer for the first of two fryings. So we're gonna go ahead and preheat our fryer to 340 degrees, and while that oil is heating up, let's go ahead and transfer our chicken into the batter. So we'll go ahead and pull our chicken out of the fridge, unwrap it, and transfer those chunks into the batter. And please do not worry about any little pieces of onion or garlic sticking to the chicken. All right, we want those stuck on there. That just adds to the awesomeness. And some people do like to do this one piece at a time. They'll batter a piece of chicken and throw it in the fryer. I like to put all my chicken in the bowl first, and then just pull them out one by one and into the fryer. So once our oil is up to temperature, we're gonna take a piece of chicken, that's been thoroughly coated in that batter, and we're gonna carefully place it into the oil, trying super hard not to splash ourselves. In fact, feel free to lower it in slower than I just did. And speaking of lowering the chicken in, you shouldn't have too much trouble with this stuff sticking to each other. Just make sure as you lower one piece, you're not lowering it right on top of a piece that just went in. So a crust is gonna form on there very quickly, but as you're placing these pieces in, try to place it into a fresh spot in the oil, or at least a spot where there's already been a chicken piece frying. But anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fry that chicken for four minutes. And obviously, because I have a small fryer, I'm gonna do this in batches. So we're gonna go four minutes at 340, at which point we're gonna remove that to a cooling rack or a crinkled up piece of foil. And we'll let that cool down and prepare itself for the final frying. And by the way, you can do this step ahead of time. That's something else we'll discuss on the blog. So I went ahead and I did the first fry on the rest of the chunks. And even though it's only halfway done, there's definitely gonna be a little bit of crispiness to it. But as they say, except in grammar class, you ain't seen nothing yet. When you are ready to serve, you're gonna crank your fryer up to 375, and we're gonna pop those back in for another frying about three to four minutes, or until beautifully golden brown and insanely crispy. And of course, exact cooking times are gonna depend on the size of your chunks. But for me, about four minutes on each frying was perfect. And when your chicken chunks look like that, we're gonna pull those out, 
We'll throw them on the rack to drain for a second. And at this point, you may want to turn your volume up just a little bit because, check this out. Oh man, fork don't lie. And you know what else doesn't lie? Teeth. But anyway, as delicious as that was right off the rack, and I could have totally eaten that whole batch just like that, we are gonna plate this up so we can spoon over our amazing and 100% perfectly authentic Korean fried chicken sauce. Maybe garnish with a little bit of green onion. If you wanna throw some toasted sesame seeds over, that's also very nice. But suit yourself, you are the Michelle Wee of your KFC. And then just in case you thought I faked those sound effects earlier, let's go in with the fork. And above and beyond the amazing, amazing texture, that chicken's so moist and flavorful, and you got those little microscopic pieces of garlic and onion in there. Just a fantastic experience. So anyway, there you go. Korean fried chicken. And by Korean, of course, I mean South Korean. I'm sorry, but I just can't officially recognize any country that finds Dennis Rodman interesting. And I'm telling you, I like all kinds of fried chicken, but this is by far my favorite method. So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.